The 1980s was an era of nightmare fuel. Whether it was horrifying real life disasters like the Chernobyl meltdown, or torment from fiction like the Evil Dead movie, people had a lot to keep them up at night. But amidst the scares, both real and fictitious, there was one that took hold of our minds. A disfigured man, donned in a green and red striped sweater, wielding knives for fingers, who terrorized and killed his victims in their own dreams. His name was Freddy Krueger, and luckily for us, he isn't real. But before Freddy, there was a very real nightmare that stretched far beyond the quaint, sleepy suburb of Elm Street. A very real epidemic that claimed the lives of many healthy men in their sleep without warning. The terrifying reality caught the attention of filmmaker Wes Craven and sparked his imagination to create one of horror's most diabolical and memorable murderers. This nightmare doesn't begin in a suburban bedroom, but the battlefields of the Vietnam War. For decades, Vietnam underwent a governmental tug of war between France, Japan, the Soviet Union, and China, until it was eventually split between a communist north and a capitalist south. In an effort to merge both sides as a communist country, the north infiltrated the south, resulting in the US occupying South Vietnam to take a stance to fight communism. In 1972, after a decade of devastating losses, the U.S. pulled its troops out, leaving South Vietnam forces to fend for themselves. The rest of Southeast Asia was in utter turmoil. Tens of thousands of Hmong people were left devastated as Vietnam and Laos became communist countries. Cambodia quickly followed suit under the control of Marxist dictator Pol Pot, the leader of the Khmer Rouge. Concentration camps were established and mass genocide ensued, resulting in two million deaths which was around 21 to 24% of the population. In a desperate attempt to escape, 35,000 Hmong fled to become refugees in Thailand and along the west coast of the United States. They thought they got away from the worst of it, when for some, the nightmares had only just begun. The year was 1981. A Cambodian family escaped genocide with plans to begin a new life in America. All seemed well when suddenly their son began making claims that something was haunting him in his dreams. He swore if he went back to sleep, he would die. The father gave him sleeping pills to no avail, and the boy stayed awake for days until he physically couldn't any longer, and he fell asleep. The family thought the ordeal was over. That was, until they heard his screams in the middle of the night. By the time they got to him, he was dead. And he was never taking those sleeping pills, instead stuffing them underneath his pillow and he had a coffee pot hidden inside his closet. But this wasn't an isolated incident. Something very similar had happened years prior. In 1977, a healthy male Hmong refugee was found screeching and convulsing in his sleep before abruptly dying. Again, no explanation. Coroners struggled to pinpoint the cause of the deaths. There was an autopsy which put down the cause of death as acute cardiac insufficiency. That is a fancy way of saying that they didn't know exactly what killed him. The only assumable explanation for why he died? He was frightened to death by a nightmare. I was living in Los Angeles in the mid 1980s and I started noticing um, uh, news stories on TV and also uh, in the paper about a group of people that was experiencing these sudden deaths, seemed to be completely healthy, have um, no reason to believe that anything what happened to them and they were dying. It was so scary, it was completely mysterious. There was absolutely no idea what was really happening. And sometimes when there's no idea in healthcare, what's happening, everyone has an idea. Were people being food poisoned? But then why was it only men who was dying? Nothing would explain why a group of otherwise healthy men were dying at this age and at this time and, and in their sleep eventually earned the name SUNS, or Sudden Unexplained Nocturnal Death Syndrome. The deaths continued to occur across seven states over several years, from California to Washington, with all the victims dying in the same unexplainable way. All the deaths were among ethnicity and were preceded by heavy breathing, thrashing around in their bed, and blood-curdling screams. By 1981, SUNS accounted for 19 deaths of Hmong men and one woman in the U.S. This may not sound like a lot, but among the Hmong population, only 13 other deaths were reported in the same time frame, meaning that sons accounted for more than half of them. Which was enough to alarm federal health officials who commenced a national study. 
Naturally, the phenomenon started making headlines with bold print words that read, Night deaths of Asian men unexplained, expiring with a snap, and deaths of Laos refugees puzzle officials. The group of people, the Hmong refugees from Laos, when I started to talk to people, said that they didn't remember people experiencing these sudden deaths in Laos, but when they came to the United States as refugees, they were starting to experience these deaths and they didn't have any explanation for what was happening that would make sense, they told me, from an American perspective. They described attacks by an evil spirit, a nocturnal spirit, that uh, was, was uh, scaring their souls away and causing them to die. For director Wes Craven, it was a horror so unimaginable that it could only be from a movie. With these unfortunate tales as his muse, he began pulling inspirations from his own life to form this new kind of terror. Wes recalled the traumatizing experience he had with a disfigured homeless man from when he was a child. The story goes that a young Wes was lying in bed when suddenly he heard a sound outside. When Wes looked, he caught a glimpse of a man with a burnt face wearing a fedora staring at him from under a streetlight. When he looked again, the man was still there and proceeded to taunt him. The sun's phenomenon married itself with the imagery of the man he saw that night, and there, Wes created Freddy Krueger, the spirit of a fiendish and perverted child serial killer murdered by the avenging parents of his victims, whose spirit lives on to torment and slay his prey in the deeply invasive realm of their own dreams. While Nightmare on Elm Street is only loosely based on the sun's epidemic, some strong correlations remain. Most notably, the story of the young man whose parents neglected his plea for help, which is a clear comparison to the film's protagonist, Nancy Thompson. That's just not reality, Nancy. As she and her friends experience identical horrifying nightmares, with many of their deaths following suit, Nancy forces herself to stay awake for days, drinking coffee and taking caffeine pills. Meanwhile, Nancy's parents refuse to believe her that there is a murderer in her dreams. Nancy, trust your mother for once, please. You'll feel better when you get some sleep. A near identical story to the case with the boy that initially inspired Wes Craven. Nightmare on Elm Street went on to be a runaway success in 1984, spawning an entire franchise to follow. And while it terrorized the dreams of generations to come, the reality of Sons still persisted, having claimed the lives of 72 Laotian, Vietnamese, and Cambodian refugees by the time of the film's release. And still, with no explanation in sight. There are many different theories as to what caused suns, and depending on the culture, they teeter between science and the supernatural. Some Hmong believe their deaths were punishment for leaving their homeland, inflicted by their ancestors, while others think evil spirits were killing men who didn't fulfill their religious obligations. Traditional Hmong religion believes that there are spirits throughout the world and that a person's ancestors when they die, have spirits that protect their descendants. So everybody uh, makes an effort to make sure that their ancestor spirits are, are happy, satisfied, and are protecting them. And the reason for that is that there are also evil spirits that you want to be protected from. In particular, one evil spirit called Dak Cho, they call a, um, a nocturnal uh, pressing spirit. It's a spirit that comes to you at night, presses you on your chest, and makes it so it's really hard for you to breathe and so that you can't move. What was explained to me is that when these Hmong refugees needed to find a place to live, literally, they didn't have those traditional structures. They didn't have the traditional shaman of the village to, to uh, support them. And they didn't have their ancestor spirits to protect them. And those evil spirits who visited them in Laos but who they could protect themselves from, um, they were now vulnerable to. Health officials speculated that it was caused by enormous stress or culture shock, that the trauma resulted in high levels of anxiety and depression. Considering the terrifying conditions of genocide under the tyranny of Pol Pot, on top of trying efforts to adapt to life in the US, it's a reasonable explanation. However, it's impossible to chart the effect of stress since it's incredibly difficult to measure. The kind of stress we're talking about here, I think of as more of this sort of cataclysmic psychological stress. It's been simmering for a while, but then something happens to trigger it and really put your, um, your, your body at risk. So the foundation, I think, of the situation is the refugee stress, the terrible stress that the Hmong people experienced. So you have this underlying stress, 
and then you are visited by this dacho uh, nocturnal spirit and that is what puts it over in this case uh, triggering the um, the cardiac uh, arrhythmia from the Brigada syndrome. Then there's Agent Orange, a deadly herbicide acid used by the United States military during the Vietnam War, which was intended to kill crops and food for the Viet Cong. For the duration of the U.S.'s nine-year occupancy in Vietnam, over 20 million gallons were poured over its vegetation. However, it didn't only affect the crops, it also had severe side effects on the Vietnamese, including cancer, birth defects, miscarriages, and skin diseases. Given the harsh outcome of the chemical nerve agents, it's no wonder that some would point the cause of suns to the use of Agent Orange. Still, no concrete evidence was ever found. And as pathologist Dr. Larry Lumen commented, nerve gas doesn't work this way, and why would it only affect males during the night? Myth and legends such as Dab Sug or the Night Hag began to resurface, a myth that's now associated with sleep paralysis, a symptom of being paralyzed while either waking up or just falling asleep, and often results in nightmarish hallucinations. But there's still no evidence to prove that it can kill someone. When people describe sleep paralysis, they say, you know, I, I could see the room. I, I, I know I was awake. People are convinced that they're awake. They feel um, that they can't move. They're aware that they can't move. And that involves having difficulty breathing. And understandably, a panic sets in. You often um, uh, visualize or have a sense that there's an evil presence there as well. And this very strange cluster of symptoms happens to people around the world when they have sleep paralysis. It is completely safe. There is absolutely nothing that can happen to you. The only problem is that you're awake and you are aware of things that you should not be aware of. It's much better to be um, paralyzed when you're asleep than <laughs> realizing it when you're awake. Sleep paralysis, which is a completely um, benign situation, gets elaborated in different cultures in different ways. Sometimes they can be helpful, some people feel inspired by these, but most frequently people are terrified by them. By 1987, there were a hundred more victims in the United States. Cases continued through the 90s, but began happening far less frequently. But it never stopped completely. In Southeast Asia, cases were reported as recently as 2014. In a dark and tragic way, Suns influenced one of the most iconic and beloved modern horror film franchises. If anything, knowing Wes Craven's source of inspiration makes Freddy Krueger all the more horrifying, as does knowing that there's something really out there that, unlike Freddy, is completely unexplained. There's been countless theories over the years, and still, there's no definitive answer for why these people died under the circumstances that they did. And that is a stark reminder that the truth can oftentimes be more horrifying than the fiction it inspires. Hey, thanks for watching this week's episode of True Fiction. It was a really horrifying topic to cover, but it was really rewarding for us to make it. So we hope you enjoyed watching it.